All right, what's happening, y'all, man? Washington training camp day one has wrapped up. I'm coming with all of the notes. We're going to go position by position. We're going to give some stock ups or stock downs. So far, it's been a lot of stock ups, but we'll see. And then I'm also going to end it with some important press conference quotes from Rivera, Terry McLaurin, and Jonathan Allen. But before we get into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, please go check out my Jamin Davis rookie film session. I'm working on the entire rookie class, even undrafted free agent rookie running back Jarrett Patterson, who's one of my favorites on the team. Also, make sure you check out the rest of the channel. All of my videos are organized in playlists. I even have a comedy playlist for all of my funny videos. So again, subscribe, hit the bell next to the subscription button. Let's get it. Well, first of all, we're one of the more exciting teams to watch in training camp. We potentially have the best defense in the NFL, and we also have potentially the fastest and most explosive offense in the NFL. And I've done videos on each of those, breaking down exactly how and why that should be. Advanced statistics, pro football focus, rankings, and everything. Ratings, advanced metrics. I bring everything to the table. But you even have like Dan Orlovsky earlier today saying that our offense is potentially going to be one of the fastest. And on Twitter, I'm seeing people rank the five most fun and entertaining teams to keep track of during training camp and we're easily in the top five in a lot of them some people even have us as number one and i'm not even sure if these are burgundy and gold fans because objectively we do have one of the most interesting training camps the talent on the team the quarterback battle the wide receiver battle the the secondary seeing what jamin davis is gonna do and again just the talent i mean a, this defensive line who doesn't have fun watching a defensive line like this so everybody should be excited about our training camp first of all even as burgundy and gold fans this is the most hope i've ever had for our team so i'm just excited for that alone but starting with the quarterbacks so far that quarterback competition that rivera promised does not look to be in full effect yet it's only the first day of training camp so don't panic maybe taylor heineke will get his chance but fitzpatrick handled all of the first team reps today taylor heineke of course had the second team and kyle allen had the third and honestly at this point it may be more of a battle between taylor heineke and kyle allen to see who's going to be the backup quarterback I feel like Taylor Heineke should be able to win that easily because I love Taylor Heineke. I feel like he could outplay Ryan Fitzpatrick, honestly, on a game-to-game -game basis if he's able to stay healthy. And then I just don't like Kyle Allen much at all. But at least he knows the offense. But yeah, as of right now, it looks like Ryan Fitzpatrick is the assumed starter for week one. But who knows? Maybe if Taylor Heineke keeps balling out like he did today, maybe he'll push the issue and make Ron Rivera and Scott Turner have to question themselves. Go out there and ball out and make Ken Zampese have a difficult decision. But it was an up and down day for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Had a couple of passes batted. Even had the first training camp interception, which was off of a tip pass. Of course, the people's corner, the people's champ, Jimmy Moreland, was going to be the first one to get the interception for the entire training camp. Of course, that's just what he does. Training camp all-star. Hopefully, it can translate onto the field advanced statistics says it has but you know right now this is the quarterback section not going to talk too much about jimmy moreland right now but again ryan fitzpatrick had an up and down day but he had far more ups than downs i mean he had a couple of passes that it was just like man we couldn't get any of our quarterbacks last year to probably even make that throw except for taylor heineke so it looks like we're already off on a good note like a lot of us have assumed ryan fitzpatrick and taylor heineke no matter who wins the quarterback battle they're not going to be anywhere near as bad as anybody that we had to throw out there last year other than Heineke. Even if they're not out here playing like a top 10 quarterback, they can't be as bad as is Alex Smith as a one as a hurt Alex Smith and a terrible Dwayne Haskins and a turnover prone Kyle Allen. I mean, there was even one play where Ryan Fitzpatrick threw a pass on a rope to the left sideline to Terry McLaurin who dragged his foot for the completion right at the sideline. And William Jackson had great coverage, but it's just one of those things. Great offense, a great pass from a quarterback, a great catch from a receiver is almost always going to beat great coverage by a corner. That's just how the rules are set up. DBs have the hardest job in the NFL. The rules are literally set up for them to fail. And there was even a moment where Fitzpatrick had back-to-back -back completions, one to Adam Humphreys and then one to De'Ami Brown. And then, like I said, Taylor Heineke was balling out all day. 
making play after play. But then even beyond those top three quarterbacks, Steven Montez was out there doing drills with the running backs today. So he's doing whatever he can to make the team. Remember in mandatory mini camps, he was out there with the special teams unit. He was out there running routes. And now in training camp day one, he's out there with the running backs running drills with them. Next up, we're moving on to the offensive line with Cornelius Lucas on the reserve COVID-19 list. Samuel Cosme was with the first team at right tackle. And of course, the second round pick, you know, had some ups and downs. There were some plays where you could see the potential with him being the second most athletic tackle to be drafted into the nfl since the 1980s there's some times where you can see that freakish athleticism but then there's other times where his lack of attention to detail his lack of mechanics and everything like that especially with him not being able to keep his hands up high like his hand placement is terrible so far and that's what got him killed a few times i mean there was even one play where chase young just basically ran right by him it looked too easy but that's only gonna make him better practicing against a chase young practicing against a chase young and a montez sweat every day in practice throughout training camp is only going to make them better because if you can learn how to block well against them you can block anybody so he's getting a crash course on how to block some of the best pass rushers in the nfl because you could argue chase young and montez sweat both have best pass rusher in nfl potential may not be there just yet but the potential is there and samuel cosme is that guy that's in the way of them achieving that right now so they're gonna punish him he's gonna have to adapt he's gonna have to get better fast especially if he wants to start week one over at Cornelius Lucas. And then it was interesting too, because Sadiq Charles was getting some work at right tackle while Eric Flowers was at left guard. So that was technically the first team offense as well. And Rivera already said that he's gonna find the best combination of players to put on the field. So there's gonna be a lot of people getting a lot of different looks. That's both offense and defense, offensive line, receiver, corners, safeties, linebackers, everybody. He's gonna mix everybody in. Everybody's gonna get a chance to work with the first team against the opposing first team it seems like except for quarterbacks so far everybody else has already started the quarterbacks haven't and then also jonathan allen had a great day with all of that money that he just got but wes schweitzer handled him very well on a couple of blocks even one block he used nice footwork when jonathan allen tried to make a move and push Jonathan Allen right outside of the play. Kept him hemmed up. Next up is the running backs. Nothing very noteworthy here except for the fact that Jared Patterson looks like he's gonna be a baller. That perfect second change of pace back to Antonio Gibson to take some carries off of him. I mean, Rivera's even taking notice. He had a few solid runs and he looked very quick out there. Granted, there's no pads yet, so we'll see what he looks like when we start to put pads on players. But right now, I mean, he's hitting the holes with quickness and explosion. And it seems like if this was a real game, he'd be out there getting some nice yardage gains out there. He'd be out there getting some nice gains. And then tight end wise, nothing very notable other than the fact that Samus Reyes had a great play. Taylor Heineke threw the ball up to him and Samus Reyes was down the middle of the field and made a catch surrounded by defenders. I mean, it was so many guys around him. He still went up there with great focus and great hands to go up there and get the ball and bring it down. Still has a way to go with a lot of mechanics, mental and technique things, but that's very inspiring uh, but i'm ecstatic to hear that samus reyes is way ahead of schedule that samus reyes is way ahead of schedule and then today was a great day for the receivers overall the secondary also had a great day but a lot of receivers made some great plays today and it's really interesting because like if you really look at it after today you can see how deep our receiver position is it may go from one of our team's biggest weaknesses to one of our biggest strengths and even better it's a very young group nobody's older than 25 other than adam humphreys and deandre carter sadly though the one piece of bad news is that i mean if you haven't already heard curtis samuel is on the pub list he's been working with the trainer in between the practice field so he's out there working he's he's not just sitting there on the sidelines chilling and Rivera addressed it and he basically said that curtis samuel's on the pub list to start because the team wants to be careful with his groin injury they feel like there's no need to rush him back sooner they want to make sure he can perfectly heal up Kind of like how they allowed Chase Young to do to a certain extent last year. They don't want to make it any worse. They want him to come back 100% because with a speedy receiver like he is, a groin injury could really stifle his production and athleticism especially. But with Curtis Samuel's sideline, DeAndre Carter got some work in the first team offense in the slot. Very surprising for him to surpass Adam Humphreys, Dax Milne, 
and Steven Sims to get the initial work in the slot with the ones. But then again, just like how Trey Apke was at corner guard covering Terry McLaurin, maybe they're just trying to eliminate guys one by one to see, all right, let's go ahead and throw him with the ones against the first team defense. If he doesn't look good, we can go ahead and take him off the list. But DeAndre Carter stepped up and actually made some plays. Taylor Heineke threw up one pass and DeAndre Carter almost caught it. It would have been the best catch of the day, arguably, because he had two defenders all low room and he used great concentration to go up and get the ball. But as he hit the field, the ball squeezed out. So of course that's an incompletion, but I mean, DeAndre Carter looks way better than I thought he would already. We brought him in here to be the primary return specialist, but to see him out there in the slot actually making things happen is very interesting. This receiving group is even deeper than we thought. And then another receiver, the other older guy, over 25, back to back from Carter to Humphreys. Adam Humphreys was killing people on slants today. I mean, it just seemed like him and Ryan Fitzpatrick were just on a different level as far as chemistry goes. And of course, because Adam Humphreys and Ryan Fitzpatrick played together in Tampa Bay when Adam Humphreys arguably had one of his best seasons in his career. And it seemed like they were just an unstoppable duo for most of the day. If it was a Ryan Fitzpatrick to Adam Humphreys on a slant, it was pretty much money almost every time. But then also Kelvin Harmon had an exceptional day. He was catching everything thrown his way. He even made one really tough catch on the sideline with great coverage around. Him. And I can admit Kyle Allen threw a pretty good ball there but Kelvin Harmon's catch was even more impressive. And then literally the last play of training camp, Kelvin Harmon took a slant, made it look easy and was running up the field. So Kelvin Harmon had a great day and that's huge for me. Me personally as Rico of Street Scores, I'm rooting for Kelvin Harmon to make this team. I want him to be one of the five or six receivers that makes the team because I just love his potential. Granted, he's bouncing back from a severe injury, but you know how some people with stem cell research and how advanced technology is now, some people come back from injuries like that even better, more explosive, quicker, faster than they were before the injury. That's just how advanced technology is. And apparently that's definitely the case with Kelvin Harmon. And remember, Kelvin Harmon's rookie season, you can say he had the best hands on the team. And that's even with Terry McLaurin on the team. So if he's quicker and can separate better, I wouldn't see why he wouldn't at least be one of the six best receivers on this team, especially since he's a great blocker as well. You could argue he's also one of the best blocking receivers on this team, which will help us mightily in the run game. So he has arguably the best hands on the team and is also arguably one of the best blockers. And now he's more explosive and quick. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. And of course, Terry McLaurin was doing Terry McLaurin things, even with William Jackson covering them very well. Terry McLaurin was just out there making plays with Ryan Fitzpatrick dotting them up, throwing it basically to only where Terry McLaurin could make a play. Cam Sims also had a nice play, a really tough catch. Great coverage from William Jackson again, but you know, these receivers are out here trying to earn a spot. So they, they're balling out here making plays. And Antonio Gandy Golden also had a good catch. So this receiving group competition is crazy. And then moving on to the defensive side of the ball, the defensive line did what they do. I mean, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, Matt Ioannidis, all of them were dominating as expected. They're the strength of the team. They're arguably, in my opinion, I think they are the best defensive line in football. And it looks like it, especially with an offensive line right now that doesn't have much continuity in chemistry. William Bradley King and Jaden Smith Williams are out here looking pretty good. The entire defensive line was batting down passes. Montez Sweat tipped up one of Ryan Fitzpatrick's passes and the receiver was open. So if it weren't for Montez Sweat, that would have been an easy completion. But Montez Sweat doing Montez Sweat like things. Remember that one where he tipped it up and then caught it himself and ran it back for a touchdown against the Cowboys on Thanksgiving. We're starting to see that already day one in training camp. And of course, Chase Young was in the backfield with them, ready to dap him up and congratulate him. But yeah, the defensive line looks as dominant as ever. But the most notable part of it is that even the guys like James Smith Williams and William Bradley King are out there looking pretty good as well. So it looks like we should be pretty solid at depth because that was a question. Then you have the linebackers. And of course, most notably, continuing on from OTAs and mandatory mini camps, Jamin Davis is getting the nod at starting at Mike Linebacker. And that can be huge for us. Very huge. I mean, he's out there with the ones starting at Mike Linebacker. 
in base defense. The regular 4-3-3 linebackers out there, him, Cole Holcomb, and John Bostic. Based on the film session that I just did on him a few days ago, I still see him potentially starting at will for us week one until he can prove that he can be a better block shedder, but we'll see. Maybe he's ready to start at Mike and be the quarterback of the defense because remember, that's literally John Bostic's only role on this team. He's not better in coverage than really anybody. He's not a better block shedder. He's not a great run stopper. Literally, he's just the quarterback of the defense, the captain of the defense. He knows where to get everybody in place in certain situations, audible and communicating and all of that. That's literally his role, his niche that he's carved out for this team. And if Jamin Davis can take that over, John Bostic should pretty much be downgraded to a permanent backup that just comes in occasionally. But until then, even with Jamin Davis getting all of this mic work in training camp, who knows? Because John Bostic played Will throughout most of training camp last year. They tried to give everybody a shot at Mike didn't work out and then we saw John Bostic start at Mike all last season so this may mean nothing right now but hopefully Jamin Davis can step up and the reason I really want him to is because we haven't had a real legitimate Mike linebacker since London Fletcher Jamin Davis potentially comes with that but with even more athleticism we just got to see what the mental part is about because London Fletcher was one of the smartest players on the field any given game if Jamin Davis can gain that with his elite athleticism, oh, it's over with. That's a future All-Pro right there. I'm not saying it's likely to happen, but it's really interesting to keep track of. Also, Cole Holcomb was out there having a pretty decent day. Nearly had a pick, but it slipped through his fingers. But it was a great break on the ball. It was a nice read. So Cole Holcomb out there getting better in coverage. That's huge. He already improved last year from his previous years, but it seems like he's taking another step forward and becoming more consistent. And then the cornerbacks, William Jackson looked good out there. Kendall Fuller got beat one time by Adam Humphreys, but generally had a great day. But it's really interesting because sometimes with the ones, it was Kendall Fuller in the slot, Benjamin St. Juice as the other outside corner, with William Jackson, of course, as your primary outside corner. And that's the ideal situation. That is best case scenario. If Benjamin St. Juice can take over that second outside corner spot and we can move Kendall Fuller to the slot, that's your most talented and highest potential cornerback group that you can put on the field at any given moment. Because you can't teach the size that Benjamin St. Juice has and his aggression at the line of scrimmage, press manning and all of that, man, I love it. And then Ron Rivera went on to compare St. Juice to Charles Tillman of the Bears back when Ron Rivera coached Charles Tillman way, way back. And that's very high praise. Both big, long, athletic corners. Remember, Charles Tillman was an all-pro corner at one point in time. If Benjamin St. Juice can be that, it's over with. We literally have the best defense in the NFL. William Jackson, I think, is already a top 10 corner. I think he'll play like a top five win, especially behind this defensive line. If Benjamin St. Juice can be Charles Tillman, it's literally wraps for the league. And also, of course, like I mentioned earlier, Jimmy Moreland had the first pick of training camp. It was a tipped up Ryan Fitzpatrick pass, and Jimmy Moreland made the heads up play to go and get it. He's a playmaker, man. He's just one of those guys who's always in the right spot at the right time, man. Even if it's not purely just his interception, even if it's a tip up, he's there to make the play. That's just who he is. And then the safeties are really interesting. First of all, Landon Collins is somehow back fully healthy. I don't know how. With that Achilles injury, I thought he may not even be ready for week one, let alone the start of training camp. And he's out there not only looking great physically and Ron Rivera complimented him on it and was talking about how his work ethic was how he was able to recover so fast but also just mentally and his passion on the field getting everybody hype he looks like a leader out there so that's great for him to return and to make it harder for Cameron Curl because I want Cameron Curl to start a strong safety but I want Landon Collins to make this a difficult decision and force Jack DeRio to put both of them on the field alongside a free safety like I've said in previous videos like I've said several times Cameron Curl and Landon Collins cannot be on the field without a free safety with them. They're just, neither of them are just rangy. I mean, we could try to develop Cameron Curl into that, but I'm not too optimistic about that. So at any given point, if both of them are on the field, you still need a Bobby McCain or a Jeremy Reeves out there with them to hold it down over the top, especially if you're trying to run some cover one, single high free safety type. But that's some Bobby McCain stuff right there. But there were all kinds of interesting combinations. You had Cameron Curl, Landon Collins out there as the only safety sometimes. Sometimes you had Landon Collins and Bobby McCain. Sometimes you had my favorite Cameron Curl and Bobby McCain. All with the ones. Again, they're mixing everybody in first team offense, first team defense. They don't just want backups going against backups. They truly want to see how good some of these people are. And then of course, Cameron Curl was out there making plays. Like I said earlier, Adam Humphreys is pretty much unstoppable on 
on slants. And then it just got to a certain point. Cameron Crowe was like, all right, I'm tired of this. And he went and made a nice pass breakup against Adam Humphreys on one play. So nice job of Cameron Crowe to basically step up and be like, all right, if y'all not going to stop it, I will. I love that. Ron Rivera also went on to say that he sees the strong safety and free safety competition as great competition. And they will use preseason along with training camp to figure out who should start who's going to be on the bench, who's even just going to make the team, because who's going to make the team is even a controversial topic right now. DeShazer Everett may be on the outside looking in, especially with him missing training camp so far. And then also, Ron Rivera said that they're looking at consistency of play as well. Like, not just what the individual player is doing, but also how are they able to get their teammates around them involved and get them in the right spots. He mentioned that he wants them navigating with and around their teammates like air traffic control, getting everybody in the right spots. You not only being in the right spot, but making sure everybody else is as well. So it's not only a physical battle at safety, but also a very mental one as well. You got to catch up. Derek Forrest has an uphill battle there, especially mentally with him being a rookie. But we'll see. But speaking of Derek Forrest, Isaiah Wright almost caught a great pass against three defenders. Derek Forrest said, nah, I'm going to need that. And literally just took the ball away and dislodged it himself. He was like, I'm, I, if nobody else is going to do it, these other two DBs aren't going to do it, I will. And then Jeremy Reeves also had a great day as well. He had a great read on a pass intended for Tamarick Hemingway. I mean, he had to literally run all the way over to bat down the ball. It was a beautiful play. And then... Lastly, before we get to these press conference quotes, if you wanted to know who's a part of the competition for the returners, of course, there's DeAndre Carter, who was literally brought here as the special team specialist. As of today, I feel like he's probably our best returner. Then you have Steven Sims Jr. also in on it, Dax Milne, Isaiah Wright. So this is going to be interesting. First of all, the fact that Adam Humphreys isn't even involved. So if he makes the team, it's just going to be purely because he looks like the best slot out there. That's just his only way to make it. Whereas Dax Milne, DeAndre Carter, Steven Sims, and Isaiah Wright, if they're able to separate themselves from the rest as a solid, dependable, and playmaking returner, like Nate Caxer said one time, he not only wants his returners to be dependable, but he also wants somebody that can go out there and make something out of nothing and flip field positioning. So whoever stands out there is quite likely to make the team as a receiver. Now the important quote. Starting with Ron Rivera, Ron Rivera said that he hopes that Logan Thomas and John Allen will be an example for other players. They want to keep their own, and if you do things right, you'll be rewarded. And I love that message. If you out here putting in the work, you'll get paid. Because these aren't even like cheap deals. These are great deals for both sides. Like as a fan, I'm happy with the money that Jonathan Allen and Logan Thomas are getting. Because especially like two, three years from now, Jonathan Allen's money is going to look like pennies compared to what other defensive linemen are getting. But these are really nice paydays, especially as of today. So Ron Rivera is showing that, hey man, if you go out there and look a certain way, and it's not even just on the field, it's off the field as well as far as being a leader and a dependable person, you'll get your money. Rivera also said that Cameron Curl has great length and range. He can play plenty of spots in the secondary. He called Curl a ball hawk as well. So we'll see as far as how that's going to develop with Cameron Curl potentially trying to move the free safety a little bit but with how great he is at covering the slot covering slot receivers covering tight ends running backs making plays in the box blitzing i mean he can literally do everything so if you can add free safety to that he's literally somebody you can put anywhere in the back end except for outside corner i guess he can literally do everything he's out here taking everybody's paycheck instead of paying all of these guys to do it why not just pay me all of their money he also had high praise for samuel cosme saying that samuel cosme has some positional flex can play tackle guard both sides and he has great work ethic right now and practices very well so that leaves us very optimistic there of course, he has a lot of technique things to work on, but we'll get there. At least he's putting in the work. He has the right mindset, and there's no reason to believe why he won't be able to fix those things. And then Rivera also said he really missed the fans. There's a lot of positives about being in Richmond, and that's why he did that. In Richmond for one week, and then back to Ashburn for the rest of the training camp. And when they get back to Ashburn, that's when they'll be able to put on pads and everything, so that's going to be really fun. And then next up, Terry McLaurin said that he did a lot of work in the offseason to strengthen his ankles so that he can withstand a 17 game season because Terry McLaurin has not been fully healthy for a season yet he's young so it's not like it's been like eight years and it's like man he can never stay healthy but still I'm glad that he self-evaluated and recognized that he needs to strengthen his ankles up so he can play all year because we need him 
we definitely need him and then i also love that he honed in on working on his release specifically that's why he was working with doug baldwin over the offseason so i love that if he can get a better release it's over with it's, he's literally on guard i mean stefan gilmore won defensive player of the year like literally the best defensive player in the nfl and in that same year terry mclaurin was giving him the business his quarterback play was just so bad it didn't matter also terry mclaurin said that he is vaccinated but he said it comes down to a personal choice he's hoping and with him being a leader of the team that players do what's best for the overall team which is basically get vaccinated but he said he's not putting pressure on anybody and that's why he's a great leader stand neutral giving his opinion but also not forcing anybody and putting any pressure on anybody terry mclaurin also went on to say that he told everybody on the team that they need to have a new year mentality he always feels like he has something to prove which he credits to the progress he's made so far it doesn't matter what you've done in the past it only matters what you do going forward you need to keep getting keep getting better and i love that message from terry mclaurin terry mclaurin has also said that along with his release he's working on becoming a better deep ball threat so that's really nice as well especially with a ryan fitzpatrick who's willing to throw it up there terry mclaurin also said that curtis samuel lived with him during the otas and they studied plays and concepts together just like when they were roommates back at ohio state so that's great and terry mclaurin said that curtis samuel has improved a lot even from just last season when he had his best season of his career so that's great to hear once Curtis Sam is fully healthy it sounds like he's about to come back and ball out but Terry McLaurin specifically pointed to the fact that Curtis Samuel is finally learning how to manipulate coverages and also just getting his route running better anyway but Terry McLaurin emphasized that Curtis Samuel is more ahead mentally than he even was last year again when he had his breakout season statistically so that's really great to hear I'm excited about Curtis Samuel coming back and then Jonathan Allen of course talked about his contract situation and how excited he was to be a a lifer with the burgundy and gold this is his hometown team when he grew up he's from virginia so it, i mean it's just a dream come true for him to potentially be here his entire career he said that his goal entering the nfl was to stay with the team that drafted him his entire career like a daryl green but again it's even better since he grew up a burgundy and gold fan this is like perfect for him and i hate having to talk about the vaccine and stuff but it's just something that i'm just reporting on again i'm never giving my opinions like even my last video i was basically talking in the point of view of ron Rivera. but me personally I, I mean i just don't really care whatever people do with their body that's what they do but jonathan allen was asked about his vaccination status he didn't directly answer but he said that all players have received the information and can make their own choices and i feel like anybody that opts to not say if they're vaccinated or not more than likely isn't vaccinated but we'll see i don't know because terry mcclellan was just like yeah i am but i'm not pressuring anybody so i would assume if jonathan allen was vaccinated he would just go ahead and say it but maybe he isn't maybe he doesn't want to apply pressure to his fellow defensive lineman montez sweat but all in all it was a great practice there were a lot of randoms that had way better days than what we expected like deandre carter was out there looking fast and explosive william bradley king was out here tipping passes left and right he had two of them and cornerback tory mctiver had a few pass breakups early on in camp and i'm not even exactly sure who that is to be honest so i gotta start checking him out and also of course fitzpatrick's connection with humphreys is just unmatched right now we got to get all of the other receivers up to speed even though i mean he's been throwing dots to terry mclaurin so that's starting to grow right there but it's obvious that him and adam humphreys have rapport with each other from their time being together on a previous team of course the defensive line is dominant ryan fitzpatrick is already starting to take some deep shots in camp and even with the receivers all having a great day overall again the secondary had great coverage top to bottom the starters the backups everybody but all right man that's the end of this training camp day one review please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please like this video if you liked it if you learned anything please subscribe if you haven't hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video like this one i'm going to be covering the entire training camp so stay tuned for that and on top of that i'm working on film sessions for the entire rookie class and as always man i appreciate all of the support man big shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel everybody that supports the channel in any way shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors who name you see scrolling on the screen right now i really appreciate all y'all man i'll catch y'all later I'm out.